Friday, Friday, Friday. It's the Whiskey Tribe Quarterly Challenge. Do you like whiskey? Are you drunk on a Tuesday and not in college? It's time for a dry week. Yeah, you heard right. It's seven days of fucking sobriety, baby. Save your brain, liver, skin, bones, intestines, heart, immune system, and grasp on reality. It's almost like whiskey is bad for you or something. Ha! <laughs> I'm a guy in the comments and I say the dry week is done because I can quit anytime I want. Then do it with the rest of us and stop being a wimp. Don't let your habits rule you. Take control. August 7th to 14th. Dry week. Do it unless you're scared. Or just do whatever you want. Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Rex. I'm Daniel. Um, it's Rare Whiskey Friday. I know, it's Rare Whiskey Friday. But yeah. Usually we have like a bottle here. Well, we're gonna start with the Benevolent Bastarding. You wanna do that and then give the speech on the rest of it? So you you begin to bring up the bottle with the... Oh. Benevolent. I know, right? <laughs> the Benevolent Bastard, Isaac Nagorski. Nagorski? Yeah. Isaac Nagorski, you magnificent. Wait, no, Benevolent, Benevolent, Benevolent. Sweet Jesus. I got I got to tell you, and this is completely... Like, I'm the one who's been teaching for two days. I should be behind the curve. I got to tell you, this is completely... His full transparency. I saw the box of wine, <laughs> and there was just so much glee. <laughs> that I got distracted got from distracted. what was actually yeah. happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's, We now have a backup box of well, whiskey. And the idea of boxed anything <laughs> is so amazingly, wonderfully <laughs> janky to me. I'm a fan. <laughs> That's Think of the shipping possibilities. So, can you load me up again. All right. Benevolent bastard, Isaac Nagorski. Isaac Nagorski, you benevolent bastard. Here you go. <laughs> now we have now a backup black box. Yes. Okay. So what he said, and I actually wanted to read this. What so, he said was, this is really cool. No, it was just, yeah, it's yeah. already going to be a long video. I just said, I'm going to let you finish. Okay. I'm going to let you finish. This is for Isaac. Rare Whiskey Friday. We're going to go through and get first impressions in several different bottlings. These aren't necessarily large brands. Sometimes they are. More often than not, these are going to be your smaller craft distillers without a lot of distribution. If you should be so lucky as to live in a place where you can get your hands on any of these whiskeys, you're welcome for the review. And thank you to the Magnificent Best for the Whiskey. One breath, I think. I Maybe missed. like one and a half. That was pretty good. Yeah. All right. So first off. I sent you guys a couple whiskeys, which he did send us the Jay Carver whiskeys a while back. He was wrapping up a two-year degree in engineering, wrapping it up, wrapping it up. Realized he liked whiskey, and he started joining the whiskey tribe. And then he quit his engineering degree when he realized he didn't want to be an engineer. As he was wrapping it up, that's right? Funny. That's really funny. And he thought, man, how am I going to get a job? How am I going to pay my debts? What am I going to do? Yeah. I was inspired to pursue a career in alcohol because of the Whiskey Tribe oh, and you right. guys. Cool. So I started looking into production. Yeah. After Googling it, I discovered, well, there's no distilling school in Minnesota. There's a brewing school in Minnesota. Right on. Which is... 15 uh, minutes away from where he live. Which is a really big part of the distilling process. Yes. You got to brew it up. Yeah. So he decided, he said, as you get this bottle, I will be nearly complete with my brewing certification right on. program. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's pretty freaking amazing. Yeah, it's a cool story, man. Yeah. So respect... Respect for somebody that gets so far down a path where you got a lot of time commitment, a lot of money, a lot of a lot invested, mm -hmm. and you're still willing to say, you know what? Don't like it. It's time for a course correction. That's that's balls. That is balls. That's courage. Giant balls. Clanging of the balls. Can you hear the clanging of the balls? Yes. Daniel, listen. Can you hear the clanging? Uh, but most people, they take. You know, I, I get it. Like I got, you a got wife too much and kids and you know bills to pay and all these things. Uh, to course correct at that point, tremendously difficult. The fact that he did it, that's awesome. Good on you. Remember we did 117 West Spirits a little while back in the West Coast whiskey? Yeah. We thought, yeah, that's pretty good. This is also from Douglas Shadler, the magnificent bastard. Douglas A. No, I'm making sure Shadler. I gotta no, I gotta make Shadler. I gotta make sure. Shadler. I understand. I'm making sure that I'm not messing it up again. Shadler. Douglas. Sadler, you <laughs> magnificent bastard. <laughs> Did I get it? I was, nailed it. Did I get it? Nailed it. Douglas Sadler, you magnificent bastard. Yeah. So <laughs> this is another product from the same San Diego County distillery. 
This is spirit distilled from grain with hops. Okay. Right? Now, normally I would say, nope, I'm out. No. no right? not but not but yeah. I'm just going to read the description of what they did, yeah. even though this is rare whiskey and it's first impressions. All right. Can I say, I'm going to say one thing before you read that. Yeah. The hop note? Yeah. I wouldn't have picked out a hop note. Yes, that's what I wanted to say. Go ahead. What they said is this is malted barley, cherry wood smoked malt, yeah. crystal malt, and rye grain. Okay. And then they vapor infused it with hops, opal and mosaic. Vapor infused through, I'm guessing through the liquid, right? So you, you, you vape? You, you va they vape and infused you it. Blow into yeah. it with a straw? That's probably what they did. And then they aged it in American oak. Yeah. So it's a really nice nose on this. It's there. I'm getting. Right. I'm getting a cherry for sure. Now I am definitely getting that slight beery note at the very, very end. I'm getting a cherry and a nice sweet eucalyptus. Yeah, but around that, it is definitely cherry and eucalyptus, and it is also very like garden fresh. Yeah, it is a fresher, almost like a clean, sweet, fresh, bright, lively. It's like walking through the flower department and when you're going to the grocery store and you're yeah. like, I'm going to bring some flowers home and it's like surrounded by all of these floral and... Yeah. And at the same time, uh, as bright and sweet and fresh as, as it is, it's not wispy. It's not thin. No, it's very it, there's present. a density to this nose that's heavy. It's got yeah. weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the, the proof on that, by the way? Do you know? 45% ABV. Oh, I can't believe how subtle that is. Is that just because we came off of the Smoky Joe? No, there's interesting layers here. Yeah, I was expecting it to be just dominate on the palate, but it's like, I think. I mean, it's one thing first, and yeah. it just holds course. But then that one thing just melts away and, leave, and leaves like a, some layers of, some strong layers. Wow, and it's still mixing it up. It's still going. Okay, no, this begs to be picked apart a little bit. Oh, but it's rare. It's rare whiskey fight. Oh, come on, man. I know. <laughs> Dude, I can't. I mean, no one's going to be able to get that. Okay. I so really like, I. Once more. I want to sit and explore that for a while. I'm, I don't know what these guys are doing, but I am bummed that when I lived in California, I didn't know I could drive down the road. They didn't exist at the time, but I wanted to drive. I wish I could have driven down the road and just sat there and explored so many this interesting place. interesting things. This is, a, this is unique. This feels like it's special and interesting and in, a, a unique angle on yeah. whiskey, that, but doesn't it feel like it's out of bounds? I totally agree. It feels like natural flavors, whatever infusions are going on, I don't know. It doesn't feel like it's anything artificial. It feels like it's all um, like a, a real unique presentation. And what was the categorization of this? No, it's like it's a distilled spirit specialty. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, whiskey adjacent. For yeah. Sure. Something the TTB requires when you do weird things to whiskey and they don't know what to do with it. Right. Okay, so. Uh, I'd keep wanting to go back. I know, right? Is there um, maybe a toffee in there? This is a gift and I'm, I really hope we're getting your name right, but when we got it in the mail, the, one of the letters was rubbed off. So I think it's Tisha I think Fasano. It's a, I think it's an L. No, I think it's Fasano. I think it was, it's not an like, L. I did a whole bunch of Googling and the more common last name of this letters is Fasano. But was there a Fasalo? No. I tried L, I tried a couple other things. All right, Tisha. Wait, wait, look at the bottom. She put a little, I didn't see the sticker the whole oh. time I was searching. It is Fasano. Told you. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Tisha Fasano, you magnificent. Bastard. I didn't, I, you know, the whole time I was researching, I didn't see that. <coughs> Uh, but then she did put right here for us, the unicorns mm. made me do it. That's funny. Um, oh, that's good. So this is I kind of like the label. Sugar House it's Distillery. Cool you like the label? I like the label. Yep. Look at the label. The Wasatch Mountains. Salt Lake City, Utah. The home of all the world's most famous alcohol. <laughs> right in the middle of Mormon country. <laughs> Son of a bitch. This help? thing is so, give it a shot. This thing is so in there. And my hands are slut. See what I mean? Yeah, it's pretty. That was <laughs> pulled something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is rye, right? Ooh. James Fowler and Eric Robinson cultivated proprietary yeast strains for this whiskey. Yeah. And they gave us all the details on the whiskey. Ninety percent rye. Yeah. Ninety percent. Ten percent malt malted rye. So all rye. Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. Whoa. Yeah. 
I like that yeah. nose a lot. That is an amazing nose. It's super rich and oily, but, you know what it, but dry. You know what it's reminding me of? Um, the, it's not the same exact flavors, but it's the type of experience that you get in the nose of a Balcones. Yeah, that real density. Yeah. Wow. This, I like honestly, it. if you like Balcones, I think this could be something that you would enjoy too. Yeah. It's sweet. You know what? I'm not, I'm not getting like super herbal. This is weird that it's a rye. That is that much of a rye because I'm not getting super herbal. I'm not getting black licorice. No, it's I'm just not, a dense dry grain surrounded by all of these really oily sweet wood notes. And like a like a cola type of deal. Wow. Like a brown soda type of. With um, almost a root beer. Maybe a molasses in there. Oh, try it. I was, I don't know why I was prepared to not like this. I have no reason. I wasn't, I was just prepared to be like, eh. No, I'll tell you the reason. I'll tell you exactly. Why? Sugar House. Maybe. You think Sugar House, like, oh, they're probably doing some like some moonshine. They're probably, you know, doing some stuff. You, basically, in the world of um, spirit making, the only people that should be messing with sugar is rum people. In my opinion. Yeah. Rum people, they've got the sugar category dialed in. The, the, the fact that it has Sugar House as the name and it's a whiskey thing, it makes me a little wary. But damn, you put your nose in that thing and the wariness disappears. That's good. Yeah. I'm a fan. Mmm. And the palate, way more, all the dense sweet notes come through. You know what? And really you don't get the dry rye until like three or four seconds after mm -hmm. you've swallowed the whiskey. And then it sort of lingers in the top of your palate. In the back of your tongue. It's really good. That is good. I feel weird calling it a rye because I'm not getting what I expect from rye. Yeah, it's definitely not stereotypical. This is just an amazing whiskey, which I think is really cool to see more and more options of... Uh, Flavor profiles. Yeah, within the spectrum of rye flavors. I think it's really exciting that we just had two back to back. I was not sure what was going to happen. Oh, no. I was totally surprised by both of them. Yeah, I mean, basically, whenever we get bottlings like this, those people who kind of bypass the world, kind of look over the world of craft options and just like, no, nah, it needs to be a big brand that has hundreds of millions of dollars in a marketing budget. And it's like, gosh, there's so many really exceptional, exceptional craft um, whiskeys out there across all the categories. But I was having an interesting conversation in the Whiskey Tribe Discord uh, oh. last week. And let me know if you have a different perspective. But it seems to me that the rye category, I think more interesting bottlings, more quality um, experimentation is happening in the rye category with craft makers more so than big name brands. Mm -hmm. I think big name brands, they've been doing- Yeah, like, that's easy. They've been doing like the bourbons Absolutely. and the single malts and all this stuff for so long. It's like, I really got that uh, dialed in. But I think the world of rye that's where you really see craft taken home. So rye is the original American whiskey, not bourbon. Rye is the original. Yeah, whiskey. but obviously for whatever and reason, bourbon became the dominant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's a lot of reasons, mostly taxes and legislation. But rye collapsed, and it wasn't until recently that rye started becoming cool. And and again, mostly because the hipsters were drinking rye cocktails and sazeracs. I keep and that in the 90s, late 90s, early 2000s, right. exploded right back onto the scene, but it didn't explode rye experimentation. It, ex it reminded the world of the classic flavors of rye that they had sort of forgotten about. Right. Now we're past that. Right. The world remembers rye. Yeah, yeah. Now people are starting to explore what rye is capable of. That's where we are now. All of that's well and good, I, but there's a moment where you said, yeah, the hipsters were drinking wine and they made it. Yeah. I don't know if I give hipsters that much credit. No, they. it was New York's, the big cities and, and bartenders. It was bartenders that brought rye back. So I think the problem is the definition of hipster is so amorphous. Yeah, like anytime it somebody, is now, but. Anytime somebody um, feels like they don't understand something, it's a stylistic or creative or whatever, it's like it's different, it's weird, it's like, oh, F hipsters. I mean it as people on the front end of a trend. So no, those the are front end of the trend were these the were the those big are city bartenders and trendsetters. The big city bartenders. I don't think they're hipsters. Well, whatever you define it. Innovators. Bartenders brought right back. Mavens. Yeah. We owe and now we're in the innovative period where everyone's like, okay, we all remember we like rye. So what's possible now? Damn. 
I like that one. Wait, wait, did you just drink this? Yeah, I jumped ahead. Did you? Oh, yeah. I jumped hold, ahead. Did that catch you off guard? Hold on a second. <laughs> did you that just, was a weird, rude awakening, I'll bet. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> did you cheat and only grab bottles that you thought would be like really nice and interesting? No, I thought this was going to be terrible. I was really certain this would be terrible. Because we you know had, why? Because we've had one, two, no. really nice. This no, don't drink it yet. This is a gift from um, no, we magnificent. Were so long, I had to get magnificent bastard Audrey Sargent. Audrey Sargent, you magnificent bastard. I don't know if you remember these guys. Look at the name of the distillery. McLaughlin Distillery. Yeah, remember that name? No. Yeah, that was the one that tasted like chewing on a campfire wood that we like what? just Wait. f***ed us. <laughs> I mean, and Dan, you're gonna have to bleep it, but that whiskey f***ed us. No, it, <laughs> it just, it was, ter- it was a horrible idea. Bent us over a barrel. Yeah. And then made us eat that same barrel when it was finished. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. So when with another one she sent us was their bourbon called right. 3799 Bourbon. Put, I thought, put oh, your nose in the bourbon. Great. Here we go. Stop yammering. Put your nose in the bourbon. Son of a bitch. It smells delicious. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Why would they bottle that hickory chipped monstrosity? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, I get it. You want to do some weird experimentation and put it out there, but my God, like literally thousands of whiskeys. That is the woodiest Look, thing. Look, you know somewhere. Oh, that is the most wood I've ever had in my mouth. Someone, Wait, somewhere. Just, you didn't let it land. No, I, I heard it. You yes, know. yes. I'm just saying, you know somewhere, one of their employees and their, their master store is just laughing every time they watch somebody review that whiskey. Like, <laughs> we were just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe you got yeah, that Yeah, you guys are all drinking it. <laughs> okay, so oh. you know, really rich, deep, Dark, like a vanilla and a molasses and a creaminess on that. Heavy. It, it's a dense kernel of nose. There's no variance and there's no flow up and down. There's just this big, heavy, dense presentation of something. Yeah, the proof on that's that's only 45%. There's no way. There's only 45% ABV, like 45 ABV. That is such a dense nose for that low of a proof. Wow, that's a, a beautiful whiskey on the nose. This is a confusing label. How so? Because it says bourbon whiskey, but then it says distilled from corn mash. Eh. I mean... I'm Just shut up and drink the whiskey. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's so good. Wow. It's it's brown sugar and banana bread. I think... You know what I think? I Walnuts. Think, I think Ms. McLaughlin... This is a... How could you make this? Hold on. This is when this is an unhealthy relationship. They're gaslighting us, I believe. Yeah, they it's are. Like, 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 hey, you know what? Why don't you come here a little sippy sip? Let me thing. pour you a little sum over here. Oh my god! Uh, it's like, no, 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 come on back. It's fine, baby. It's fine. It's cool. Let me get this up. So I was like, oh, it's really good. I think we'll try this. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, uh, I feel like we're part of a practical joke. <laughs> because the people who are capable of this, this right. is a delicious bourbon. What? No, it, yeah, because that bottle that we had previously, it was the, the hickory chips and the, the monstrosity, we'll, we'll call it. Um, that leads you to believe they're either mad lads with the experimentation and they're going to do things or that... Or just incompetent. Yeah. But oh, this... this They are not incompetent. No, this is grace and nuance and subtlety. Mm. and richness. This has to be pot still though. I have no idea, but sure. It has to be. It's so rich. It's so the vanilla cream balanced against this uh, oaky molasses, dark, like a dried leaves type of, wow. maybe there's some burnt caramel in there, in there Damn. too. Damn, y'all. All right. I think this may be the most, uh, the distillery that we've had the most polar opposite reactions oh, yeah. to from bottle to bottle. No, period. McLaughlin wins. It's one of the nicest and one of the worst. The weirdest. Yes. Yeah, Combination. The weirdest. And finally, one more bottle from Titan of Whiskey, Patrick Cohn. Patrick Cohn, you Titan. Daniel in the distance. I heard there was a yes and he. What? What is that? Where did it come from? It, it must be. Hey.
Cheers, you magnificent bastards. <laughs> this is Del Bach. Patrick is always hooking us up with the Del Bach. Yeah. Oh, Del Bach is made. This is the 2019 winter release where they go into then and they select a whole bunch of barrels and they bottle it just for this winter release. Some really nice things that we've liked in the past. Hamilton Distillers. <laughs> Sorry, I, was trying, I, I didn't quite step on you enough there. I was working. I was trying to get it out sooner. <laughs> just couldn't pull it off. Ooh. Oh, we're going to end with something right up my alley here. Okay. You know what I'm An concerned? American spooked single malt. That's <laughs> why I was holding on to that sentence to start talking. <laughs> it's pretty good, huh? <laughs> you think I haven't been aware of this for like a year and a half, and it's like your own side private joke that only you and the editors know. <laughs> no, everybody that I've not knows. been. Everybody been knows. Watching. This isn't a private joke. That this is an not inside been, joke. That that's <laughs> not hundred percent like. So a, a, a game that well, a drinking game that that's just son of a bitch. <laughs> a drinking game that is guaranteed to make you die from alcohol poisoning. Every time Daniel interrupts what me, is so the thing every about time this Daniel interrupts me, malt. you take a drink. And then every time Daniel goes like this, you take a drink. Uh, and then every time Daniel claps, you take a drink. You'll be dead before the so end of the episode. You're trying to kill people. <laughs> the thing that concerns me about this nose is I think the smoke layer may be a little bit too heavy-handed. I was about to say muted. No, are you kidding? No, okay, but here's why. Oh. I'm thinking of the previous Del Bach winter releases where the smoke was more like Octomore and it just took over. Okay. This one to me, compared to my memory of other Del Box. So here's going to be the saving grace. There's so much dense smoke on this nose right now. In wood. Yeah. If they're able to balance that in the flavor, then it could be amazing. If they can't pull off the balance, I don't know. Oh yeah. There's the smoke coming about three fourths of the way through it rounds back around. It's actually and it ends in ash. It's a lighter smoke than you're expecting on the taste. What's the proof on that? Oh, it's actually go back and real quick while it's still in your mouth. Take a smell. Fifty-five percent ABB. There's a weird ABB. fruit, like a cherry fruit note. Yeah, but you have to have just take it. It went away. Take a drink. Let it linger. Now smell. Oh, dark there it fruits, is. Dark, fruit, dark fruits on the taste. Yeah. It's back in the nose as soon yep. as you've taken a sip. Dark fruits dark on the fruit. taste. Boom. Right in there. Wow. And then the fruitiness ah. really shows up. Yeah, you have to acclimate to it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, first approach on the taste. The smoke is a thinner than what you would expect based on the nose. It's still there. Still very much there. But then you go back to it and then the dark fruits that were hiding underneath this veil yeah, they came of back. woodiness, of smokiness, and that really starts to come up to the top. That's oh, really nice. I like that. It's, it's really nice. I'm going to tell you, though. I think it's unfair to Del Bach because they make stuff that, you know, I, I, I don't remember a Del Bach that I didn't like. Not me either. But these surprise hits. Yeah, the, 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 the variance between expectation and delivery right. was huge. Yeah. Here we had high expectations. Yeah. And they delivered. Yeah. It's what, I, it's what I expect from Del Bach. What I expect from Del Bach. It's like that kid who always gets A pluses and got an A minus and you're like, really, what happened? And then the kid who almost always fails and he gets a B and you're like, good, good job. job. Buddy. <laughs> Which one were you? Yeah, I was definitely the A plus kid. Really? Yeah. I was A plus up until fifth grade. And then I realized- You found it in after fifth grade? Oh, I really did. No, and then I realized, it's like, wow, these, these adults, they're really kind of dumb. Because that was the moment I realized, this is, you're a kid, it's like, oh, yeah. these, these larger human beings, they got to figure it out. This is amazing, and they're taking care of me, and I get to do fun things with my friends. Oh, yeah. And the fifth grade was the, the, the grade that I realized, these idiots, they're really, really dumb. <laughs> There's a lot, like, you know, education, <laughs> academics, fine, I can learn some stuff, whatever. But I just had so many experiences with people in places of authority that should not have been there. Mm. That the whole worldview just kind of shifted. And from that point on, it's like, all right, I'll do enough to pass. get through this process. But see, I did I did no homework and never took my whole senior year of high school, I didn't take anything home. Okay. I still graduated in the top 10%. Yeah. You know why? Didn't have any friends. Not at school. <laughs> 
You had a girlfriend in Canada? No. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pen pal. We were pen pals. Wait, really? No. Okay. <laughs> it's uh, the that would have been drinking. funny. <laughs> <laughs> if you fight me, fight for a friend. You steal, may you steal your lover's And if you drink, may you drink with us.